You can probably hear it in my voice. You probably see it in my face. I'm just annoyed at the world and the way things are going. I'm sure, I'm not the only one. Anyway, there's some good things, and one of them is um, my beard. I think life's just better with a beard. I grew one, and yeah, you know, some things got better um, because of that. So another thing that's awesome is cameras these days are so fucking cheap and awesome, especially the Blackmagic Micro Cinema Camera, which I absolutely love um, because it's fucking tiny and it's raw. So like, you know, A7S, A7R2, um, even FS7, like all these fucking sick cameras that have awesome detail and sick features. They're just not raw, so it pisses me off. I just want raw. That's all I want. You can't do anything as awesome as you can do in raw. Um, that's, that's my thing anyway. But I just love working in post. So anyway, I've got about 15 minutes before I'm due at the West End Pump House, which is my local drinking hole um, here in Hobart Town. And... I don't want to be late for that, so enough rambling. What I want to do is I've sort of I shot this um, just this afternoon. I wanted to test out these new lights. Um, mm, 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 mm. These, this guy. I didn't pay that much. Shop around, but um, this is basically what I bought two of um, some time ago. I haven't really played with them yet. Haven't really tested them, but fuck, they're sick. They're affordable, they're bright, and you can attach modifiers. That is the key. Um, so yeah, go ahead and check those out. I bought some, and I think they're awesome. And these are some of the results I got. So this morning I just used one of them, and I was just trying to emulate some sunlight coming in here. And uh, you know, they're, they're equivalent-ish of about maybe like a 2K Blondie. Um, but the beauty is that they're already daylight, where a Blondie is tungsten, so if you wanted to daylight balance a Blondie, you're basically gonna get a redhead. So they're fucking, Amazing lights, don't cry about color temperature, accuracy, and magenta spikes and shit, because, you know, for that price, you just can't, don't cry about that. So here we go, we have our image, and it's shot raw, just shoot raw, if you, yeah, you can shoot ProRes, but you're just going to get a better picture shooting raw, and it's easier to fuck with if you shoot raw. I know you know that, and then you're going to complain about memory size cards. You can tell I'm getting jaded, I'm annoyed with the world. So let's go ahead and um, whenever I start grading anything in Resolve, um, I like to process my film stock, <laughs> my digital film stock using the raw camera settings. So we've got our raw settings here and um, basically I want access to things like white balance, ISO, this awesome highlight recovery thing, which you also gotta be careful of sometimes because it can introduce pink noisy artifacts, but in this case it's gonna really help us just save some highlights on that vase up there, isn't that cool? Um, the other thing you'll notice is my project settings. I've got a 1920 by 800 project, and my image scaling is set to smoother um, on for anti-aliasing, smoother filter, and high, and we want to scale for frame to crop. Okay, so let's get this shit out of the way. Here we are in our um, cin cinema DNG settings. I'm just going to reset those. Right. So this is what it was looking like in the camera for me this morning. Looks terrible, right? We all know that log image looks shit. Um, but there's some issues with it. One of them, the main issue right now is white balance. Let's go ahead and see how I would fix this image. Basically what I'll do is add saturation, and that's not enough, so I'm gonna add color boost as well. And then I'm gonna add some contrast. And now what I'm getting is just an idea of what the image, or where the white balance problems are. So I'm seeing magenta and I'm seeing, maybe it's a little bit cool, so I'm gonna warm it up. Go to my uh, white balance settings. And I'm just gonna add some magenta to balance out those greens and warm it up a little bit as well. Now I'm not actually looking to have a perfect white balance in this shot. I'm actually kind of dialing in a look right now. And one thing that is a bit funny with a Blackmagic Micro Cinema camera, especially when using the raw light filter um, OLPF, is that the tint, you're gonna require more magenta than usual to help balance things out. And sometimes that can make the skin a little bit pink um, but that's very easy to fix. So anyway, here we are, we have a balance shot. We haven't actually done anything in Resolve just yet. All we've done is processed it here. But then what I am gonna do is back off that color boost because fuck color boost. It's dangerous, all right? <laughs> and contrast, we're gonna kill that as well. So what we've done is we have adjusted our white balance and we've rescued our highlights and we're looking at our histogram. And usually what I do, not our histogram waveform monitor, is uh, for skin tones, I like my skin tones highlights to sit at 640. That's just where I like them. So these little highlights here on this guy's face, they sit right here. Cool? Cool. So when you're looking at ISO, the reason I bring that up is because now we could change that to 800 ISO, right? But now my um, highlights on the face are too high. You could play with it this way. I'm gonna use it this way. 
Um, another thing you can do is use the exposure slider and that just gently brings things up and down. So maybe we do bring things up a little bit. Okay, so now we're gonna step out of my raw camera settings and actually start grading this shot. There's the right and wrong way to do it. Um, and I'm gonna show you the, the way that I don't know if it's right or wrong. So I'm gonna use some curves here. This is how I do it all the time. I'm um, just looking full screen here, I'm going on and off. I'm looking at my, uh, my scopes down here, making sure that things aren't clipping. But I'm also trying to give it that sort of cinematic contrast, dare I say that. We could probably go a little bit more, uh, a little bit higher with those highlights. Because it's a sunny morning. We're trying to emulate the sun smashing through, um, which isn't happening very well. Next thing I see here is um, we've got these sort of blue shadows, um, naturally. And, you know, we could go back to our white balance settings and smash that up a bit more. All right. That's going to help that cause a little bit. Um, the next thing we can do is add some more saturation here. So, you know, you're supposed to add all new notes for this shit, but we're not going to do that. I'm just going to punch some satch um, up here. And I'm also going to, just while we're here, I'm also going to go to hue versus saturation. I'm just going to go to the yellows. you got to be careful with this tool as well. Also dangerous. So I'm just going to smash the yellows up a bit as well. So we've got this sort of image. It's coming together. Um, one thing you've got to be careful of with the Blackmagic Micro Cinema Camera, especially if you're using an OLPF, replacement is the sharpness um, especially on a wide shot when you're shooting wide open on the Samyang 24mm which is soft as buggery um, with two pieces of filters in front of it um, you want to smash that sharpness up at least to about 30 I reckon and 30 is going to help but you can see still that it's not that sharp but definitely helping out and if we go back to um, this example on YouTube Definitely watch that shit in HD. It's really nice. You can download the original off Vimeo as well. Um, got some nice results. I'm not going for that look. I'm going to go for more of a neutral look in this one. Um, anyway, so that's what I did there. I'm also going to go to my blues and just pump those up a bit as well. I think that looks pretty cool. All right, so where are we? Next thing I want to do is um, add another node here. And I just don't like this blue um, color balance on the left. So I'm just going to grab this thing, put it here, um, just have a look at that and then just go here and go to the temperature and just increase um, some warmth over on this side of the frame and as you can see what that's doing there just helping balance out that white balance shears the next thing I want to do is add some focus to the scene um, and in this case I just want to add some sharpness to my face so I'm going to uh, make this thing smaller like so I heard um, Grant Petty say today on his epic announcement for the uh, Ursa Mini Pro um, sick camera by the way, but he, he said some stupid shit <laughs> uh, One of them is like You just can't be creative And be you know a good colorist unless you've got a panel and It's like like some things you just I'm sure you're an intelligent man, but like Saying shit like that's just dumb and like insulting But I am overly sensitive Let's be honest. Okay, so all I've done there is just added um, a bit of contrast around the face. Now I'm going to go to the tracker and I'm going to turn zoom off because I don't move around back and forth in this shot. You do know a slight, uh, notice a slight push in, but I just did that in, um, in uh, with keyframes here using the zoom function. But uh, the point of my uh, exercise here is if we use the zoom and rotation, sometimes you're going to get problems like, see I turn my face like that. It's pretty good, the tracker actually, but when this page crosses, Sometimes I can fuck shit up. So let's just go ahead and um, see how we go. I'm going to turn my grades off and I'm going to start tracking. I'm going to go. See, that's fucked. But we can fix it pretty quick. I am mocking you, Grand Petty. Only for those little things, though. That's it. Like some shit, you, you know you're saying stuff that's just so people buy stuff. I mean, good for you, but fuck. It's annoying sometimes. I think that's what annoys me about the world. Mostly what annoys me about the world these days is um, how Instagram and Facebook have just become like, you know, part of every day. It's an important part of the day. As soon as you're not eating or talking to someone, it's Instagram and Facebook. Doesn't that worry anyone? Seems to be, everyone seems to be fine with it. I think it's fucked. All right, we're going to set this to frame. And just before I turn my head... Um, <clears throat> That's a little keyframe there. Move forward and just rotate that. And you're like, well, why didn't you just tick the rotate thing? Because it doesn't work properly often. That's why. How aggressive do I sound? 
I can't help it, this is just who I am. So I'm just gonna leave that back there and press Shift H and have a look, see what's going on here. So the whole goal here is just to add a bit of sharpness to the face, a little bit more focus. Um, do that, I'm just gonna go to the sharpness tool. There we go, 46, 47 is usually not too bad. So I got a bit of contrast added there with a the curve and I've also got some sharpness added there. Um, so, you know, it's not the best shot in the world, but it's starting to look a little bit more three dimensional. Um, one thing that we could probably help the situation is if we blur my feet there a little bit. So again, um, adding focus. You could do this with the elliptical tool, maybe, and just blur the shit out of that. It's probably a bit much. Um, so just back it off a little bit. Are these tutorials actually useful or people just like watching YouTube because there's nothing else to do? I don't know, I'm guilty of that. Um, I might also darken that a little bit as well. Okay, so that's what I would call, like, you know, that's graded. And you're gonna do that for every single shot in every single scene and match everything? Fucking earth you are, because you're a colorist. <laughs> it's a lot of work, but it can be done quickly. And if you don't have to talk about it and record yourself, it can be done even quicker. Um, so yeah, I think things are looking pretty good. We haven't actually given this a look. We haven't messed with the highlights or anything. Um, let me just show you um, another technique you've probably already seen before. We're just going to select a highlight range and if we turn Shift H on, you can see exactly what range we're selecting. So something like that. Um, and then we could just maybe push some warmth into those highlights, but sometimes I'm just getting used to using this temperature slider to add warmth these days. I think it does a nice, nicer job. So that's looking pretty good. Um, the cool thing about Resolve is you can go Alt O and it's gonna add an outside node, which is the exact opposite of this selection. Um, so then we could go there and just add a bit more contrast again, go back to this one, bump that up a bit. We just gone too far there on the face probably. But you get the idea that you can like do a whole lot of cool shit with contrast, um, with selections and focusing tools and things like that. So, I mean, that's looking pretty cool. Not amazing, um, but considering how soft and shit it looked um, before, definitely I've noticed when shooting raw, even three to one compressed raw, which is still very, very good, it's just much better than ProRes. I know ProRes 10 bit 422 is really good, but RAW 3 to 1 is just better. It just resolves more detail. It handles um, things like what we're doing right now with sharpness and pulling keys. It just does that better. So, um, for example, shooting 3 to 1 compressed RAW is using less of your memory card than shooting ProRes HQ. So, why the fuck would you shoot ProRes HQ? Anyway, just saying. Um, that's probably what I would, what would have done there. And then often what I'll do once I've sort of graded a scene like this is, um, you know, make sure everything's matching in terms of contrast and the highlights and the face has always got the same highlights, skin tones are all the same. Then I'll usually go to the timeline and just add another node here. Uh, looks like I've already done that, which has fucked everything up. Um, <laughs> just pretend that wasn't there. And we add a new node. So now we've got the clip nodes and then we have the timeline node, which is like a blanket that blankets over everything else. Um, let's just reset everything we've got here. I don't know what I had on there. I think I cooled it off. Just went to the color temp and maybe just backed off everything as well. You can always bring this to Hipsterville and just push up the shadows, pull down the highlights. Why do people like that? Oh yeah, and let's get rid of some saturation while we're there. Oh yeah, and let's put some like magenta into the shadows. <laughs> now it's a bit for YouTube. All right, so, um, but it is cool to be able to use a timeline node to sort of add a grade on top of the grade, if that makes sense. Um, and I've saved a couple, like the Fujifilm, um, you know when you go to here and you go right click 3D light and you can get a like film looks and there's one here like Fujifilm, Daylight Balance Fujifilm. What you can do is you can actually like, um, you can D, you can turn that into a log, a non-contrasted Fujifilm um, I think I did a tutorial on that once before with Dave Doug Dale. Um, but the point is, what you can do is you can save the color information from a LUT and not use the Luma information. So um, that's exactly what I'm going to do now. So I've saved that here and I'm just going to add that. Oh, don't be like this resolve. And um, now you can see, oops. I just don't have time to edit this shit. You're just going to have to, yeah, there we go. So on and off. And that looks fucked with posterization. Should I even post this tutorial? I think it's a total train wreck. Hopefully you got something out of it. Just done this, I don't know. But yeah, it's cool you can do that. 
Um, another thing that I found, I just sort of started doing it today actually. So check this out. Um, just say, oh, here's, a, here's another technique. I'm just going to go Shift S to place a node before the first node, and then I'm going to go Alt P to create a parallel node. Then I'm going to right click on that parallel and morph it into a mixer node. Then I'm going to go um, Composite Mode Add, and then I'm going to Top Layer. Um, basically, what we're going to do now is trying to do some chroma noise reduction. Because um, often you'll notice in, in Blackmagic cameras um, that the noise, and RAID cameras as well, the noise is often in the shadows, actually with any digital camera, but the chroma noise is often particularly bad in Blackmagic cameras um, in underexposed areas. So chroma noise is basically just pinks and greens just poking their heads up where they shouldn't be. Um, so what you can do to get rid of that is you can sort of just blur that channel. So how do you do that, the color channel only? Well, you create a parallel node, turn it into a mixer node, um, combine the two using a composite mode called add. And then on the top layer, what you want to do is go to your primary bars and take away the luminance. So now the top layer is only chrominance. The bottom layer that it's mixing with, um, we can go here, go to primary wheels, go to saturation, take that to zero. So now you'll notice the difference. It, there is no difference right now. Um, this layer mixer structure, and I'm putting it before my color correction, by the way. Um, and the whole reason for that is because I want to get rid of that chroma color before I do any corrections, right? So now I've got this um, setup where I can actually go to my chroma channel and just go to the blurring and just blur the fuck out of it, like maybe like a 65. And again, you probably won't notice barely any difference, but you will notice much cleaner shadows with a um, monochromatic no noise pattern. Now, the long-winded um, thing before I'm gonna end this uh, tutorial, you can't even call it that, is that I'm gonna use these two nodes. What I'm gonna do is select them both, and then I'm gonna go create compound node. It didn't fucking work. Can I select all three of them? Create compound node. Yes, so I've selected all of them, created a compound node. Ah, oh, fuck, it doesn't work. Well, anyway, forget about the compound node. This is still a useful tip. Um, definitely get into that. But what, let's do this compound node thing here. So what I could do is, uh, fuck, I don't know. I could do this, bump up the mids. Um, nah, fuck that. What I'll do is I'll go to the red channel, put some blues in there, to the shadows. Cool, so, and um, then I'll do another node, and for whatever reason, I'll just split it and add some yellow to the highlights. Cool, so we've got this grade, right, which is a combination of two nodes, but what I wanna do is fade that grade on and off, or back it off a little bit. So what you can do is you can highlight both of them, right click, go create a combat node, and now it becomes one node, you can go to the key, and you can actually back off how much of that grade comes on or off. It's fucking sick. Or you can just add it to the highlights or whatever. But compound nodes, real powerful shit. Get on that. Have a good weekend. Bye.